Okay, picking up where we left off. Uh, in the last video, I sort of took public transportation to the outskirts of the Trussex uh, National Park. I had a great morning of photography. Um, I'll reel some of those images together for you. And this brought me here where I promised that, well, I promised this. I'll talk about that next time, because I want to kind of talk about you know, something I've been thinking about, which is like why I do these uh, photography vlogs, right? Right, right. So let me finish my breakfast and we'll giddy up and have a talk. I love zip-off hiking pants. You know what I'm talking about? Pants like these with the zippers, you just, you, you, you just a flick and they become shorts. Ah, yeah. Okay, maybe a little more than a flick, but you get the idea. You can go one short, one pants. They're really great for days like this where you're changing elevation, you're starting out early in the morning and hiking into the afternoon and it just gets hot. You start out the day keeping your legs nice and warm and your muscles pliable with these and then once it gets uncomfortable, you just zip them off and throw them in your backpack. It was probably like 10 years ago that I saw my first pair of zip-off hiking pants and I fell in love like instantly. I was on a long hike with my friend like a, a, probably a, a week or so. And he had just taken this expeditionary class and he was like geared out to the max. He had like all the coolest, latest and greatest outdoor gear. And you know, I was probably hiking in like uh, athletic pants or something. And uh, he had these like sweet North Face uh, corduroy zip off hiking pants. They were awesome. And like out of all the gear he had, the only thing that I was really jealous of were those pants because you just look so comfortable all the time. They look so convenient. It turned out there was a flip side to that coin. Uh, we, uh, we ended up going through a patch of woods that was really heavily infested with chiggers. And the chiggers destroyed him. They got in through the zipper of his hiking pants, just like you would expect, and got all down into his lower legs. A few days into our hike, he was just a blistering pussing i'll spare you the details he was a mess and he needed attention and we had to cut our hike short because of it so that's like how i advise people to outfit themselves now like i highly recommend zip off hiking pants they're comfortable they're really convenient but uh, make sure you get a good sheen fabric and of course like always uh when you come out of brush or just maybe routinely during your hike be sure to check yourself for uh unwanted parasitic insects <laughs> and arachnids I should mention that some people don't like zip-off hiking pants at all. It's not for bad reason. For one thing, it does put you in the situation to end up with shorts and long socks. For the extra comfort, that's a weighty toll to exact uh, both from yourself and your loved ones. No one deserves that. Secondly, it is also true that the zipper is uh, something else to fail. The extra pant leg is something else to lose, right? It's an extra complication that could throw a wrench in your plans. In fact, for some uh, really hardcore zipper skeptics, the weight of the zipper is enough to keep these out of their backpacks forever. That's because space and weight efficiency is such a huge part of how you game out the outdoor activity of backpacking. This is especially of interest to like long distance through hikers and alpine hikers where, you know, every every gram of weight equates to some extra distance or some smaller amount of food you have to carry. In fact, uh, a few years ago I was ice climbing in Japan and I was, I was in this mountain hut where um, a, a lot of climbers and hikers sort of gathered together because it was on the very popular uh, alpine trail. And I saw a couple of old Japanese dudes there, and they were, um, looks like I'm going this way. They were uh, discussing different ways of walking. Uh, here, I'll try to demonstrate. So uh, these two uh, older gentlemen who looked very experienced on the trail uh, were meeting together at this hiker hut after their morning of hiking. And uh, what they were essentially engaged in I'll call it a friendly debate as to what was the best and most efficient gate to use when you're walking uphill. And they were standing by a stairwell that went up to a loft section where hikers would camp overnight, or I camped overnight. 
So one man sort of started up the stairs and he used sort of a conventional gate, right? And then the next old man was like, no, 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 what you gotta do, listen, my Japanese isn't perfect. I probably didn't understand this with 100% fluency, but I got the gist. He was like, no, you gotta swing your leg around, right? Instead of doing the full lift and lower. And that way you don't raise your leg as high. I thought that was pretty interesting that, you know, that level of nuance is the detail that these long distance hikers take in order to maintain efficiency throughout their extremely long routes. Have you ever heard the phrase, a long walk used to refer to a conversation that takes a long time to get to the point? What I found is that on alpine trails, right, popular climbing areas, beaches that have great surf, you will find some little area where the enthusiasts who perform those outdoor activities will come and gather together after their morning's activity and discuss what happened to them that day. It's a place where stories get told. It's a place where lessons get shared and learned. It's a place where uh, a generally solitary activity takes on a community dimension. Unfortunately, there's no analog to that for outdoor photography. In photographing landscapes, the landscapes, the light, the weather tells us where to go. We don't necessarily go to one place, and the places where a lot of photographers do congregate are typically the worst places to photograph. I think you know what I mean. So while, yes, it's true, you may encounter another photographer out along the trail, in a parking lot, at a visitor center. Usually, you don't. So the more I watch these videos, uh, the more I realize that my favorite photography vlogs are the ones that sort of fulfill that role, right? Of, of the coffee shop uh, on a surfing beach or, you know, a, a, a ski shack. This is maybe like the best analog of that for outdoor photography that I've seen are these YouTube channels. So that's been like my guiding principle for the vlogs that I've been making and for the vlogs that I wanna make going forward is, uh, you know, if you and I met at, at some random coffee shop over breakfast after a morning of shooting, what will we talk about, right? Because I know what a couple of outdoor athletes would talk about. You know, how, how's the powder on that side of the mountain? Uh, are those those new bindings? Can I check them out? What do you think of zip off hiking pants? Okay, the light is starting to look nice here on yonder hills. I only have about an hour to spend in this area and then I've got to go catch my bus. So I say we get over here and make a photo. Uh, so what I'm really happy about here is that uh, the sun is at just the angle, filtering through the branches of the trees over the hilltop and down onto this uh, wavy, uh, wavy textured contoured hillside um, to make these interesting dappled light patterns out across the hillside. So um, this is sort of an interesting opportunity that is only available now at this time when the light is uh, generally terrible for most other types of photography. So uh, I like that I've been able to seize on that opportunity. Um, uh, also, I've chosen this spot up here because it sort of showcases the lay of the land. So you'll see it better when I show you the photo on the viewfinder. Okay, I'll get to work because I don't want to miss my bus. Okay, I recorded a conclusion of this video on location, but I accidentally deleted it. So to the best of my recollection, I hope that you liked the video and I reflected that it's really for a very niche audience of photographers who are specifically considering using video to commemorate their experiences. So if that's you, everybody sat through this video just for you. So please give it a like. Lastly, I teased that in the next video, I plan to finally stop vlogging about vlogging 
by relating an unusual aspect of my vlogs to what I think is the most misunderstood piece of advice in all of landscape photography. But what I didn't know was that I would be having that discussion while being banished to the beautiful beaches of the Scottish island of Cumbrae. The reason that this relates to what I think is the most misunderstood but still great piece of landscape photography advice is that, so subscribe and tune in next week to hear my take on this advice and find out how I got myself in that situation. And until then, keep an eye out and a foot forward, and thanks for watching.